Hi and welcome. In this video we're going to talk about the distance formula, something we use quite frequently in mathematics. To put it in perspective, you might want to think of the distance formula as a merging of two major ideas in mathematics. Uh, first of all, I would say it's really a result of the Pythagorean theorem. So here we have Pythagoras, who is often attributed with the Pythagorean theorem, although we could certainly spend an entire video discussing that. But here, the distance formula is the result of the work around the right triangle in which we say that a squared plus b squared equals c squared. That idea is fundamental uh, in the distance formula because when we take the ideas of Rene Descartes, who many years later um, really formalized the idea that we can graph right algebraic and geometric ex expressions on a on a plane, right? When he comes out with that idea and we merge that with the Pythagorean theorem, what we get is the distance formula. So we don't have to really call it the distance formula, right? We could say the Pythagorean theorem on a coordinate plane formula, right? Because that's really what this formula is. It is the Pythagorean theorem on a coordinate plane. Although we're not really going to refer to it as that, it's too wordy, but that's really what it is. So let's look at a graph here to, to make sense of the work of Pythagoras and Descartes and to think about how these things relate to each other. Um, here, I've got this graph set up of a line, this purple line, and I've kind of zoomed in and, and cut out a piece of it so you can see what's happening. Now this line, right, I'm just really referring to the line right here. And on that line, we have points. And let's call our points A and B. So here, point A is the point 0, 0. Right? This is point A. And different colors, you can see that. Point A is 0, 0. And point B is right here. And that point is 3, 4. So just to summarize, we know that A equals th uh, 0, 0. Right? And B equals 3, 4. So we want to know how far apart are these two points. Don't confuse that with slope, right? Slope would tell you what the rate of change is. It would tell me this distance right here, which is 4. You go up 1, 2, 3, 4. And this distance right here, which is 3, the slope would be 4 over 3, right? Change in y over change in x. But that's not distance. I mean, if you're standing here at point A and you want to get to point B, you're not going to walk over and up. Right? What line are you going to walk on? Well, you're going to walk on a straight line here. right? And that's what we're trying to find. This is our distance. And you can see what I'm talking about, I think. Um, here is our right triangle. right? That's where the Pythagorean theorem comes into play. And we have a right triangle on a coordinate plane, on a, on a Descartes plane, right? a Cartesian plane. And here, our right triangle set up, we have two legs. We have this leg right here, this is 4, and this leg is 3. The hypotenuse, 3 squared plus 4 squared, right? What's that? Well, that's 9 plus 16, or 25. But this is not 25, it's the square root of 25. So with the Pythagorean theorem, you would say c equals the square root of 25, right? And that is 5. And that's the answer, in fact. This distance is 5. But that's... That's kind of me using the Pythagorean theorem and showing you how that applies in the graph. Let me talk about this a little bit more formally in terms of points. First of all, how did I know that the vertical distance was 4? I counted, right? 1, 2, 3, 4. But that's a terrible idea, especially when our scale is enormous. So if you're given two points, how can you find vertical change? How can you find delta y? Well, the same way you do in slope. The two points you have, subtract the y values. So now we're going to build up our distance formula, right? Because we want a general way of finding this distance. The first thing we do is find this one leg, and that's going to be the difference of the y values, y2 minus y1, right? So let's think of two points. Here we had a and b. a could be generalized to some x value, x1, and some y value, y1. 
B can be thought of in the same way. Let's say B is equal to a second X point, or X2, and a second Y point, or Y2. So then in general, algebraically, I, I would do, instead of 4 minus 0, I would do what? Well, 4 is Y2, so Y2 minus 0, which is Y1, and that's our first step. Right, so now we've got this general height. This general leg is the difference of the y values. What about the other leg? Well, that's just the difference of the x values, right? 3 minus 0, and that's 3 across. So here, we can think of that as x2 minus x1. So this is our algebra, and over here, I'm going to write the numbers. So we have 4 minus 0, and we have 3 minus 0. Now, with the Pythagorean theorem, we took 3 and squared it, and 4 and squared it, and then added them together. So here, with these steps, I'm going to square these terms, just like we squared over 4, and add them together. With the algebra, it's the same idea. We're going to square each of these terms, right, and then add them together. But we're not going to touch that, because um, that's going to kind of unfold into some uh, different distributive property aspects, which we'll get to in a little bit, but here we're just setting up the formula. Now, that almost got us the answer. Right, what happened in the equation right here? Well, take a look. What happened? We had 3 squared and 4 squared, and we got 25. But then, to find the final distance, what did we do to 25? What did we do here? Right, what did we do? Well, we took the square root of 25 to find the answer. And what you might do is just think, oh, so I took 3 squared, and I added a 4 squared, and then essentially I took the square root of that, which is the square root of 25, to find my c value. Well, here, then, we could write the square root of this. And we say distance, or d, instead of c, as we typically do in the Pythagorean theorem. So here, in general, what's this going to equal? Well, we take the square root of this, just like we do in the Pythagorean theorem, and that's going to equal the distance. So essentially, this formula is just saying a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Or, in this case, a squared and b squared equal d squared, or distance. So c squared, from this perspective, equals a squared plus b squared, and that means, if you think about it, take the square root of both sides, that also means that c equals the square root of a squared plus b squared, which is exactly what we have here. Right? A squared is the difference, let's say, in the y values. B squared is like the difference in the x values. We're squaring those and adding them together. There's this direct connection. It's just, it's just writing the Pythagorean theorem right, with coordinate values. And this is our general formula. Now, from this, they can ask you a bunch of questions. Right? Let's start with a, a, a typical kind of first-level question on distance formula. Let's give ourselves two points. Let's say the points are, we can draw them right here, 2, 1. Right? And then let's say, I don't know, 1, 4. So these two points, 2, 1 and 1, 4, they would then ask you what's the distance between them. So now if you think about this on the graph, right, we've got this hypotenuse. So we're trying to find the length of it. And we've really got a right triangle again. And you can see it in the picture the legs are 1 and 3. Um, and we can find the hypotenuse from there. But let's apply the formula because we want to get a sense of how this works on a general scale. So what we're going to do is subtract the two y values. 4 and 1. Okay, 4 minus 1. I'm not going to even evaluate it. I'm just going to set it up. And then we square it. And then we add that to our difference of our x values. 1 minus 2. The order doesn't matter really because you're squaring it, right? And when you reverse the order, y2, y1, or x2, x1, you just get an inverse. But since you're squaring, you get the same result. So here, if I did 1 minus 2, I would get negative 1. Squared is positive 1. 2 minus 1 is also 1. Squared is 1. But I like to keep the order the same, uh, so I'm ready for that with my slope. Then I take the square root of this, and that will equal my distance. Okay, so here we have 4 minus 1. That's 3 squared, right? Or 9. 1 minus 2 is 1 squared is 1, so 9 plus 1 is 10. So d equals the square root of 10. And the square root of 10 can't be broken down, but when you get square roots that can be broken down, right, do so. We'll try another example real quick. So let's say we had, now we'll try a different example, 30 and 4, 
right? And then, well, let's avoid two-digit numbers in this example. Let's try 8 and 3, and then negative 5 and 2. Okay, so here is find the different distance, excuse me, between these two. What do we do? Just like before, right? We subtract our y values. So I'll do 2 minus 3, and we're going to square that. Take the square root of that and the sum of the difference of the x values. So negative 5 minus 8, and we're going to square that, and that equals d. 2 minus 3 is negative 1 squared is positive 1. Plus negative 5 minus 8 is what? Negative 13 squared is 169. Take the square root of this, and that's what d equals. Now here, d equals the square root of 170, so you've got to break it down if you can. So what do we do? Well, with any radical, we try to find perfect factors. So we take the prime factorization. 170 is 10 times 17. 10 is 5 times 2. So there are no perfect factors here, right? 15, uh, 5 times 17 is 85. 2 times 17 is 34. There's no combination that gives me a perfect square. And you're done. Try one more. So, so let's try one more. Here they tell us, let's say, we have the points negative 3, negative 10, right? And then one other point, let's say 4, 4. So really quick now, because here we're subtracting the difference of the y values, 4 minus negative 10, right? 4 minus negative 10. We're going to square that, square root of that, plus 4 minus negative 3, which is, well, we'll get to that in a second, 4 minus negative 3 squared, and this equals our distance. So 4 minus negative 10, that's 14 squared, right? Plus 7 squared, right? 4 minus negative 3 is 7. So if we finish this one, we get 196 plus 49 squared of that equals D. And this equals, well, 230 plus 15 is 245. So now, last example, we'll break down 245. I know 5 goes into 245, right? How many times? Well, every 20 times is 100, so it's 49 times. Right, two hundreds and nine groups of five left over. Um, can forty-nine be broken down? Yeah, it's seven times seven. And here's our first example that can be broken down. Um, this is really equal to seven times seven times five. And if we take the square root of two forty-five, we can think of it as the square root of seven times seven times the square root of five. You can take the square root of the factors, and and then that'll still give you the right answer or the equivalent answer, excuse me. So the square root of 7 times 7 is just 7. And here we get 7 radical 5, and that's our distance. So those are some similar types of problems. We'll show you one more that often confuses students, but those are the basic types of examples. The next level you might work with involves a scenario where they give you a point, right, and another point and a missing piece, and they tell you the distance. They might say something like, find the value of A if the distance between, and they'll, this is where they use the variable as one of the parts of the points, A3 and, I don't know, 4, 8 is what? Well, here, I mean, we're, we're making the problem up, and A could be anything. Let's say, I don't know, um, five units. Okay, so now what's going to happen? Well, right, now we, we have a couple of things that tell us the distance. This is our D value. So they give it to us. So, and they give us, let's say this is X2 and Y2. Now this is a little different, right? We're, we have y1, but what we're missing is x1. So essentially, we're finding uh, the value of x1. So we set up our formula, right? The distance is equal to the difference of y right, squared, the y value squared, difference of the x value squared. And it's equal to the square root of that, sum. So um, that means 5 is our distance. And that's going to equal the square root of y2 minus y1 8 minus 3, right, squared, 
plus 4 minus a squared. And this is, this is actually a lot, maybe, less scary than you're thinking. So the first step, I'm going to do 8 minus 3 is 5, 5 squared is 25, plus 4 minus a squared. I'm not going to square that yet. And I could, there's no reason, I, I just don't prefer, I prefer not to. All right, so that being said, oops. Here, we could square both sides. So square everything, 5 squared, and we square the square root. 5 squared is 25. The square root squared, those are inverses, now it's gone. So 25 plus 4 minus a squared equals 25. Subtract 25 from both sides. Okay. Try to solve for a. This cancels out, and this is 0. And 0 equals 4 minus a squared. Now this is, this is a little challenging, but this involves distributive property now. 4 minus a squared, that means 4 minus a times 4 minus a. And it's going to equal to 0. So now what do we do? Well, we distribute. 4 times 4, that's 16. 4 times negative a is negative 4a. Negative a times 4 is negative 4a. Negative a times negative a is a positive a squared. Two groups of negative 4a is negative 8a plus a squared. Right. Okay. Oh boy, where are we going with this? Now, what we have to do is solve for the value of a. And what you would do is you're going to factor these in two groups. And this is uh, basic factoring of quadratics, something you might not even know yet, but we'll work through it. The, the basic structure of these factorings are, are, can always be written similar. First, a squared is set up here, so we know we're going to need to write a twice because we're factoring it out. So if we were to multiply it back, that gives us a squared. Now we need to find factors of 16 that add up to negative 8. It's always that way. If you're trying to factor by hand, you want to try and find factors of this number that add up to this value right here. So what do we have? We have 16 and 2. We have 4 and 4. We also have negative 4 and negative 4, and that's the one I'm going to choose. All right, I know that um, 16, if I take this, the uh, square root of that, it could be negative 4, because negative 4 times negative 4 is positive 16. And if you find that factor pair, pair you just write that in right here. You're done. Now this is saying that a minus 4 times a minus 4 has to equal 0. That means you're multiplying two numbers to get 0. If you think about the only way that could happen is if either one of the numbers is 0, both of them are 0, right? Or maybe this one is 0. So one or the other is 0, or both is 0. For example, you know, if I'm multiplying, let's say, 5 times 0, that would give me 0. Or 0 times 3 gives me 0. Or 0 times 0 gives me 0. If one or the other, or both, are not 0, this can't work. So I just think to myself, okay, if a minus 4 could be zero, equal to 0, let me solve. Well, a minus 4 is equal to 0, so what's a? What minus 4 is 0? Well, a would equal 4. And that's our answer. Now, that was pretty tough. It involved some quadratics and some foils some factoring, some stuff you might not have even seen before. But that tells you that this point here is 4, 3, right? If you think about the graph, we've got a rough graph here. We'll do 1, 2, 3, 4, and then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 4, 3 is right here, right? And 4, 8 is right above it. And notice how far apart they are. The distance is 5. You can just count right up and down. So that's, that's pretty much, I think, as tough as it can get. So if you can handle this one right here, then you're really on the right track. Thanks.